today we are going to uh, be looking at introduction to digital marketing and digital strategy okay now um, so at the end of this you should um, know what digital marketing is and what digital strategy is that's number one on the table of content uh, what is digital marketing and digital strategy benefits of digital marketing you should be able to identify your target audience and buyer persona um, setting digital marketing goals and objectives creating and creating an implementation plan digital marketing funnel now digital marketing funnel is a topic that i really love so much and um, this topic actually confuses even experts okay I've, I've not seen too many people that know how to really teach digital marketing funnel um, very well so I will take my time we are not going to look at digital marketing funnel today I'll shift that to tomorrow's session so that we can have a lot of time to dedicate to building a digital marketing funnel okay and then conclusion and then we move straight into the practical session okay so you can see that Every class will have a practical session that you can also participate in. So you can do, you can also be doing the practical session as we're doing it over here. In the course of this training, we'll be building out a real life business. Okay, that's what we'll do. Okay, so yeah, so this is what we'll look at today. Now, what is digital marketing and digital strategy? This is important. Digital marketing is any type of marketing that utilizes electronic devices or the internet as a medium. Okay, so when you are doing marketing, when you are trying to sell a product or a service and you are making use of the internet, okay, or any electronic device at all, alright, you are doing digital marketing. As long as you are trying to sell a product or a service, alright then you are doing digital marketing and digital strategy is a comprehensive approach to utilizing digital tools and concepts to meet business objectives now let me explain to you what digital strategy is digital strategy is actually a plan okay that you will actually document this plan all right that's digital strategy and that document will guide you on implementation of several digital marketing tactics okay to achieve a specific business goal again you hear me using some words there tactics is one of them okay and we'll see what we mean by tactics very soon okay so let's say you have a business or you have a product or a service it's one thing to know that digital marketing exists. It's another thing to now document a digital marketing strategy that is specific to that business or that product or that service. Okay, what is the implication of what I just said? That means every product and service will need a different digital marketing strategy. Okay. The digital marketing strategy you use for product A is not going to be the same and we will see why that is as we go along. Okay, Now, it provides direction on which digital tools are necessary to employ. So there are digital tools and you would have a sense of direction of which tools you should use for different products. And then also developing a digital strategy allows for maximum roi return on investment in the various digital mediums available okay if you don't if you don't uh, have a digital strategy number one you're going to struggle with what budget to allocate to different channels you're going to struggle with what um what what what's the word now what strategy is the word should you use for a particular product or service for example um, uh, you're going to struggle with something like should I use storytelling or should I go with the education approach yeah the word is approach what approach you would use 
to sell a particular product or service okay so let's say you want to sell you want to sell um uh you want to sell notebooks for instance you need to think number one when you're developing a digital strategy you need to have figured out who am i selling this notebook to um how will i sell the notebook okay in planning on the who and the how then you come up with a solid digital strategy and the practical session will cover all this where we have a template that we've already created you will just be answering some of the questions that you know pertains to your business using this template and then you come up with a solid digital strategy uh, for your product or your service okay so we'll get there now what are the benefits of digital marketing really the benefits number one reach um, you can reach millions billions of people you know at the click of a button that's number one number two it's cost effective there is digital marketing and there is traditional marketing traditional marketing is marketing that does not involve the internet so more physical activities that's traditional marketing okay so um how does this work uh, let's say you have billboards for instance okay um signpost and all uh um printed flyers Okay, physical printed flyers those are traditional marketing okay and you know really going out to um, let's say knock on doors quote unquote okay for example you have you are a banker and you have a target to bring or to generate um, a specific amount and you want to use traditional marketing now i'm trying to show you the difference between the traditional marketing and digital marketing um taking into consideration the the benefits now okay so you are a banker you have a target to bring a specific amount at the end of the month and then you decide to use traditional marketing you can decide to go from office to office okay telling people oh i work with bank z I want you to open an account with us and you give them the form that's traditional marketing now if you want to factor in the time it will take that particular banker to go to to reach let's say 50 people in a day but with the click of a button I using digital marketing would have reached millions of people within seconds or minutes okay and that man will spend the whole day maybe he can only talk to five people because if you talk to a they will have objections you talk to b b will have the same objections as a and then you start to repeat your answers over and over again okay um when we get to okay so i will introduce the website and the business we'll be building out okay we we'll build out a website for this business we we'll do search engine optimization we will run ads we would monetize our website during the course of this training and we'll do a whole lot of other things for this particular business and you see it step by step nothing hidden just like you can see now so you see that digital marketing is cost effective you can target um you can do targeted advertising okay for example if I want to run ads right and let's say I want to sell um, I want to sell uh, what which a luxury brand for instance let's say um, which a luxury brand that you use I'm, um, is Dio okay okay Dio Dio is a luxury brand right where do you stay sorry this is um Oluwafunke. where do you live please sorry for asking um the area i'm going in delta states okay we are in delta state patani a village <laughs> okay patani oh perfect example perfect example now um let's say a dior product right do you think it would make sense to go to um 
let's say which area am I familiar with in worry um, um, in Delta State okay I'm familiar with worry worry is in Delta State uh, but which specific area that big men live in let's say a, a, there is a refinery road right a refinery road somewhere in, in Delta State right I don't, I don't know, know much about, about the state, state to go. I know rich people live in worry as about. Okay, great. Okay. So okay. rich people live in worry as against Patani. Okay. So let's say you want to advertise your. Will it make sense yeah. for you to keep advertising that product, that luxury job product, to Patani people living in Patani or people living in worry? Which one would make more sense? Worry will make a lot of sense than Patani. Great. Why Why is that? Tell me. Because, number one, the inflow of um, prospective customer are no much compared to worry. Okay, great. You answered the question perfectly well. Number one, you want to look at the buying power of the people. Okay, you want to look at the buying power of the people. Digital marketing allows you to target, and you will see all this targeting done in real life. It allows you to target specific people that have money to buy your product. That's targeted advertising. It allows you to, and we'll, by the time we start looking at how to identify your buyer persona, we'll look at things like demographic. Okay, we'll, we'll look at things like their psychographic. Okay, we'll look at other things that make up, you know, the buyer persona and how you can create one for your product or your service. All right, so we'll look at all those things. But again, you need to identify the buying power. Now, um, if you're using traditional marketing, there is no way to monitor um, who you are speaking to at a particular time. But with digital marketing, you can actually target who you want to speak to. And then this person is swiping on their on their let's say facebook or instagram or their twitter and they will see your ad pop up okay but you have actually targeted them if you i don't know if anybody has noticed have you ever noticed that you would go online huh you will look at something maybe something maybe a baby um product and the next time you go online you will just be seeing ads for that particular kind of product or at times you think this is a miracle you talk about something with your friend hey Alpha, uh, uh, Jude I, I won't buy let's say I won't buy new shoe and you are just saying that and you go online and you are flooded with shoe ads and you know you're wondering oh how is this happening that's targeted advertising Again, you get better customer insight. What do I mean by better customer insight? I can know everything about my customer, their interests. Hmm? In fact, there are tools that can allow you, if you're using Google Analytics, for example, you can know your the interest of the customer. You can even know um, their aspirations, for instance. You can know their behavioral pattern. Okay, you can know people who, who will tend to click on a link using digital marketing. Okay, so you get better customer insight. You can measure the results. If you run a digital marketing ad or a digital marketing campaign, you can tell who how many people clicked on the link. You can tell how many people visited the website. You can tell how many people clicked on the buy button. You can tell how many people even dropped off. All right, these are things that can be measured. Another thing is another thing is improved engagement, okay? So improved engagement means you are speaking to the customer directly or the customer can speak to you directly. So there is the one-on-one -on -one engagement um, when you're using digital marketing as against uh, traditional marketing. Again, let me ask the question: Who can um, who can add to these benefits we we have here? Yes, someone should add to the benefits. Yeah, what other benefits do you think that digital marketing can can do for you?
okay that will be part of your your assignment everyone so i want more benefits i want you to research and think about more benefits that you get when you use uh digital marketing okay so let me i hope you can all see my screen you can still see my slide right can yes, sir. okay great buyer persona now this is where we talk about how do you define your buyer persona when you are coming up with a digital strategy this is like one of the most important things you need to do you need to know who you want to sell to if you don't know who you want to sell to then your digital marketing is flawed okay and it's very easy to know or identify your buyer persona your buyer persona is also your target audience okay again buyer persona one person you defined then you bring a lot of people together target audience so number one i'm just going to show you here two major things you need to consider number one the demographic which is this one you can see going up and the psychographic okay so demographic information consists of their age and gender so are they from 18 to 16 do they fall under gen z gen x gen y or any other gen that is available now okay you need to know all that because the way you talk to a gen z is not the way you talk to me which which gen do i follow now? millennia or whatever what you want to call them okay the way you talk the language you use for different age groups is completely different that's why you need to understand who your buyer is okay the gender the way you will speak to attract a product that specifically caters to females will be completely different from the way you want to speak to a product that caters to males okay if i'm selling for example a fitness product the way i will talk about it let's say a fitness product for men the way i will talk about it will be different from the way i will talk about a fitness product for women like waist trainer i'm not saying men don't use waist trainer don't come and call me a, a misogynistic person yeah okay so but again more women use me waist trainers and the way you sell a waist trainer will be different if you have identified your gender for that product okay their occupation and income before you try to sell something to someone you want to be sure what is this person's occupation and what is this person's income so that you know so that you are not wasting your time trying to sell to somebody who does not have buying power for your product okay another thing is education level and location again one of the things we talked about so when you are defining your buyer persona you want to go something like this um i sell waist trainers for women please note i sell waist trainer this is an example please i sell waist trainers for women within the ages of 25 to 50 who are who work in the corporate sector for example and you can you can continue to define and go in depth so you see how i started first i identified my product i sell what was the product waist trainers and i said the next i identified the gender for women within the ages of 25 to 50 who work in the corporate sector and earn 50,000 naira monthly on average and are graduates and are located in Lagos for instance now I have covered demographic for my buyer persona for that product okay what about psychographic information this is important as well Psycho psychographic information speaks to personality okay what's this person's personality values and interest what do they value and what are they interested in you don't go and sell somebody who is not interested in losing weight you are now selling 
um, waist trainer to that person the person do, let's say somebody who wants to actually gain weight you are not selling a waist trainer to that person the person is not interested in your product so the chances of buying that product is actually almost zero so you need to identify what their interests are somebody who is not interest in, interested in personal development or skill acquisition then I'm trying to sell a course to that person no it will not work that person is not interested in skill acquisition the person is interested in maybe something completely different maybe marriage or something else okay so you need to um, understand this again lifestyle okay so lifestyle somebody who doesn't do luxury brand you are trying to sell the person a luxury brand that's not the person's lifestyle okay okay so after your buyer persona you need to talk about setting so you need to set goals right and in setting goals there is something called smart goals okay i want to assume that most people have heard about smart goals so um again who will i call on this time um bukola have you heard about smart goals yes, yes i have okay can you quickly tell us what it means what the acronym smart what does it mean okay um i think s stands for specific uh, the goal must be specific and um m measurable okay a yes uh, i think a is accuracy okay if if i can remember how realistic and um C is time bound. That must be between a specific time bound. Okay, you are you are right. You are right. But the A we like to call it um achievable. Okay, so okay, uh, yeah. All right. So that's that's the acronym. So smart um S. Your goals should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be achievable. They should be realistic, and it should be time bound. So let's take the waist trainer example. If you want to set a smart goal for that, you will say something like um measurable okay so specific the specific is i want to sell waist trainers now you are specific on what you want to sell but it's not yet measurable so you need to say i want to sell 1000 waist trainers now you are it's measurable but do we know if it's achievable or not i mean um achievability is uh, really up to you so you define what is achievable based on your strengths and your weaknesses and we'll look at that as well when we do SWOT analysis okay now realistic is it realistic yes is it time bound yet no so i want to sell 1000 waist trainers before the end of may now it's time bound okay so you need to set the smart goal your goal must be aligned with overall business objectives so you should have the business objective in mind and then you should be able to align your goal with the business objectives and don't worry when we dive into the practical session we will look at this thing um we'll look at it in depth and we'll actually pick a business and set some goals for that that business okay so the last slide there before we go into i want us to have enough time for practicals because practicals is important so the last slide here is um creating an implementation plan now you need to create a timeline for implementing the digital marketing strategies so you have identified strategies you have identified the channels that you want to use in your strategy you know okay i want to use social media for example or i want to use email marketing okay or i want to use any other um platform or channel digital marketing channel the question is what timeline okay when do you want to run your ads it's important as well okay because there are some ads that are seasonal based okay you will need to identify the resources and roles required to carry out the plan who will do what are you the one that is going to um, be responsible for customer service for instance are you the one that will be responsible for email marketing you need to identify who will do what for you okay and then you need to have a budget for each digital marketing tactics tactic you choose 
now remember I, I spoke I said something about tactics tactics involves the actual actions you take on those platforms for example you say I want to do email marketing the email marketing in itself the the actions that you take most times technical from a technical perspective is what we are just referring to as tactic okay so you need to have a budget for let's say email marketing you need to have a budget for social media marketing how much do you want to use to run ads for instance and how much do you want to generate from that your budget okay you need to you need to have all these things properly documented that's what a digital marketing strategy speaks to all right um so when you have all these things then uh, you can now start really implementing the strategy so first today we'll, the practical session we have for today is we would use our so let permit me to stop sharing we'll use the template we've created I'm going to share the template everyone can look at it during a um, short let's say 10 minutes break okay during our short 10 minutes break and everyone can be looking at that template then when we come we will use the same to actually uh, create a strategy for a, an actual business okay so uh, permit me to stop sharing for now and then I will let me share that template here